Hello and welcome. As you might have guessed, in today's episode I am designing and building my own tube amplifier for guitar. If this sounds interesting, stay tuned! In the past I've built many tube amps, including a Soldano SL100, a Marshall Plexi and several Fender amps. But now it's time to design my own amp. All the high wattage amps have far too much power for home application and I prefer to use storm boxes anyways. So I just need a clean channel that works well with overdrive or distortion pedals. Before getting back in time, to show you how I built this amplifier, let's talk about the specifications. In a nutshell, I wanted to have approximately 2 watts of tube power built in a rack mountable head a clean channel and a highly adaptive travel control to tame some fizzy highs. Also, I would like to have a built-in attenuation for even more spice at low volume. And trust me, two watts are extremely loud. Of course, we also need a cap. My decision went to a 1x12 cap loaded with a Celestian Vintage 30 speaker. I tried several different sizes and came up with those dimensions. When it comes to my taste, an open back design for a 1x12 is mandatory. It allows more low end to resonate with your room resulting in a bigger sound. Ok, let's take a look at my schematics. This amp was a bit of a challenge because I tried it to be as simple as possible. Meaning, there are two triodes in one envelope. It's hard to come up with such a limit while providing a usable tone stack and some filtering at the same time because the tone stack itself puts a load onto the signal, ending up with less amplification. You may think there's only one treble and a mid control. Actually, there's a bass control too. Integrating it as a part of the tone stack would attenuate too much signal we need later on. The idea was to boost the whole first gain stage with a capacitor, in this case C3 or C4, parallel to R3 on its cathode. It is switchable to three positions. On the one hand, yes, we are boosting the whole stage, but there's also a boost in the low end. Two birds with one stone, boosting the signal and getting more low end, instead of pulling it more and more to ground. <laughs> okay, moving over to the second stage, I did the same on the cathode, but this time it's more a volume boost than an audible low end increasement. After this stage, there's a master volume to dial in our final volume level. I added a so called bright switch, which lets the high signal components passing through the pot, even if the potentiometer is dimed way back. Finally, the signal is fed into the self split push and pull configuration of the last set of triodes. This is the power amp, so to speak. Across its anodes, there's a switchable high filter which is really effective in getting rid of the fizz which some overdrive or distortion pedals introduce. And after the well overdimensioned output transformer, I decided to add in switchable attenuator for even more spice and fun in pushing the tube amp to its limits while not blasting the windows. And there's also a protection load resistor, in case you forget to connect a speaker cap to the amplifier. As you might have noticed, I chose 6N1P and 6N2P tubes for this amplifier. They are good and cheap available, even in military specs versions I have used. But since I designed my PCB for both 6N2P and the more common 12AX7, you can even use those. Just follow my instructions for the different heater wiring on the PCB. The construction is pretty straightforward. I am only using high quality components such as Fischer und Tausche or Wima capacitors. When it comes to wiring, I much prefer silicon wires over those vintage cloth wires. The reason for this is obvious. Maybe those wires can withstand the hype, but certainly not the heat. A clear win for the silicon wires. And final steps in mounting everything together and we have a finished amp. I wish it would be that simple. In real life it took me about a week of work. <laughs> ok, after finishing this amp let's get some sounds out of it. 
I use two mics for all recordings, with no post EQ or processing at all. On the left channel is my room mic and on the right channel is the famous SM57. The channels are mixed in a way that it sounds like you are sitting next to me in the room. So you can nearly expect that it sounds exactly like this in real life. Of course, every mic does color the tone and it depends on the room size too. But I did my best to get it as close as possible. At some point you can even hear my pick noise. So you get the idea of the recording volume and the room depth. <laughs> Thank you. 